I will say this about Hillary. She doesn't quit. She doesn't give up. I respect that. I tell it like it is. She's a fighter. I disagree with much of what she's fighting for. I do disagree with her judgment in many cases. But she does fight hard, and she doesn't quit, and she doesn't give up. And I consider that to be a very good trait. Thanks to both of you. I want to thank both the, uh, the candidates. I want to thank the, uh, the university here. This concludes the town hall meeting. Our thanks to the candidates, the commission, Washington University, and to everybody who watched. Please tune in on October 19th for the final presidential debate that will take place at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Good night, everyone. Well, it's called a presidential debate, but some of the language used tonight was hardly presidential. Kicking off tonight, talking about locker room talk. In fact, the two candidates began this debate not even shaking hands. And I think if I saw it correctly, Gail, they didn't shake hands at the end either. No, they did not. And it was very clear from the beginning, neither one of them reached out to shake the other's hand. And we learned earlier last week on CBS This Morning News that the most telling thing is how candidates approach each other when they first start. Yeah, they, I, it, I, I, they did shake hands at the very end, but they started this debate by not shaking hands. and. And it started, too, I thought, Nora, very interesting, with the very first question, do you think that you are modeling appropriate behavior for the presidency? We kept hearing all day that Donald Trump was ashamed and embarrassed, that he was going to be contrite. And when he was asked about his vulgar remarks, he says, well, that's locker room talk. And I think many people are asking, which locker room is he talking about? Many men who I've talked to about this, and everybody's been talking about it for the last 48 hours, says men may, have, may talk about women, but they don't talk about women like that. John, you've been watching this debate. What did you make of it? And just to pick up on your point, Gail, what they don't talk is, is in gleeful terms about sexually assaulting women. That's exactly the right. different line here. That's what's not in any locker rooms that any of us have been in. The challenge for Donald Trump coming to this debate was to build on his base. He has a core base. They're, their base. They are not worried about this video. They're not worried about anything he says. He's got them. His challenge was to reach out to those reluctant Republicans to keep the fleeing of Republican officials who've been leaving by the busload in the last two days since this video came out out by reassuring them somehow. A very, very big, tough task. So there was talk, was he going to be contrite? Was he going to go offer apologies for his recent behavior? Was he going to show that he can fit within the constraints of a debate because it would mean that he could fit within the constraints of the White House? He decided, forget about all that. He was going to show up as a 100% Donald Trump. He was going to counterpunch hard. He was going to beat up the Washington politicians who've made a mess of this country. He was going to talk right to his base. He was going to beat up on the moderators. He was going to give Hillary Clinton no quarter. He was going to bring up Bill Clinton's uh, uh, past indiscretions as a president, and that basically he was going to do everything that made his base love him so much. And that is his political challenge, though, was to be expand beyond his base, and the Republicans who are fleeing him are worried about the voters that he's turning off. They still have that worry. He still has that challenge but, after this but debate. But isn't that why the people who support Donald Trump like him? I was in Ohio over the weekend talking to Donald Trump supporters, and they all said to me, we know who he is. We know exactly who Donald but, Trump is. And what he represents. But he's won the Republican nomination. He needs to win the general election. And he has been on a course, since Kellyanne Conway came into the campaign, been on a course of trying to build, bring in those reluctant Republicans, those college-educated women, some college-educated men who have daughters who don't like to hear this kind of stuff, who will not admit that this is locker room talk. And those are the voters who are nervous about Donald Trump. There was nothing that he gave them tonight that is any different than the Donald Trump that, that has been out there winning praise from his voters, but not curing the riskiness and worry in that other group. And to that point about this campaign, Donald Trump does not have much of a organization. He has relied on the Republican National Committee. The head of the Republican National Committee after this tape was released has said, stop the funding, let's put a pause on this. Lawmakers are meeting in Washington tomorrow about whether to decide whether they will pull more support from Donald Trump. What are you hearing tonight? Well, what I'm hearing tonight is that before the, uh, before the debate when Donald Trump met with those women who had accusations about Bill Clinton, uh, I was getting emails from Republicans who were advising Republican officials who were on the fence that this makes it easier for them to leave Donald mm -hmm. Trump. There's going to be a very important day in Republican politics tomorrow because it's not about what happened in the 90 minutes. It's about what happened before and what might happen in the future. People who were on the Trump train 
Ukraine now have to think about where it's going? That's the way it's been explained to me. Is it going to keep being volatile and, and unpredictable and coarse? And do they want to stay on that train? And there are Republicans who are trying to figure that out. There's nothing tonight that's going to change their calculus. But John not only met with the Clinton accusers, he had the Clinton accusers sitting with the Trump family, right. front and center, that they're on camera, even taking a shot at Bill Clinton while they're talking about the Clinton and, accusers. And that's why his supporters love him, that core group, because he's willing to do what it takes. He has said, I will go to those lengths for you and for America in a way that people have not before. It is appealing to a group. It is not appealing to a bigger group that he needs for the general election. That's his challenge in the campaign. But does he need the Republican establishment? It doesn't seem like he thinks that he does. Well, he doesn't He doesn't feel like he needs it, and they and and there is a split going on right now, yeah. and that split continues uh, after should, this debate. We should just note what's happening here in the room. Donald Trump and his family have left. Uh, the Clintons have remained to shake hands with all of the undecided voters who were part of this organization by Gallup, and I think to engage them uh, further. Major Garrett has been, you were going to say something, John, well, quick, I was and I'm going to say, Hillary Garrett. Clinton, in terms of her challenges, when she explained this Lincoln story, where the excerpts, debate excerpts, my guess is that people who have worries about her trustworthiness did not find that story convincing. And Donald Trump called her on it, too. Yeah, that's right. Immediately. We've got uh, a They're number taking pictures of analysts with people that were asking questions. standing by, including um, John Heilman and Mark Halperin from The Circus, but want to go first down to Major Garrett, who has been covering the Trump campaign. Major, um, Mike Pence, who is the vice presidential nominee, was watching tonight. At one point, Donald Trump seemed to diss him. How do you think that plays? Oh, it didn't seem to diss him. He dissed him before the largest audience possibly in American presidential debate watching history, including his running mate, Mike Pence, where he said, I did not talk to Mike Pence about this particular aspect of policy regarding Russia and Syria, and I disagree with him. And I've been in contact with those who are in the Pence camp who have been very reluctant to describe Pence's reaction. I can tell you this, Mike Pence going into this debate wanted to see Donald Trump be much more contrite, was not comfortable with the conversation going on in the campaign about an aggressive counterpunch against Bill Clinton and his sexual past. That's exactly what Donald Trump delivered. That's not exactly the road Mike Pence wanted his Republican nominee to go down, and he wanted him to be more contrite about the remarks that he made, ones that Mike Pence and his wife Karen found to be deeply painful and distressing. Pence has not been a public advocate for Donald Trump since the release of that Friday tape, and the dissing he suffered tonight in the context of this debate may intensify some sense of distance he feels between himself and the Republican nominee. But I will say this about Republicans watching this, both in the Trump campaign and those who are trying to figure out the road ahead. Tonight's debate was for them a microcosm of Trump. Some moments of brilliance, like the joke he made about Abraham Lincoln, talking about a special prosecutor if he's elected to take on Hillary Clinton over the emails, but also wayward moments, which they thought he didn't know the policy, he didn't understand the underlying politics. And that represents in miniature the conundrum that Donald Trump has presented and continues to present to the Republican Party and his base of supporters who are as resilient as any base of supporters I've seen in American presidential history. Hey, Major, do you think the Trump campaign was pleased with his performance tonight? Because all day long we've been hearing he was going to be contrite, he was ashamed, he was embarrassed, and he was going to make another statement of apology tonight. That did not happen. It did not happen, but the Trump campaign is pleased because they do believe the most important selling point that Donald Trump has always brought to the American political dialogue is I'm a counterpuncher and I'm not afraid and I will take the aggressive move when my back is up against the wall and that's what they believe Donald Trump did and they also are also very pleased with the overall debate prep that Chris Christie, the New Jersey governor, led on all the other aspects of this debate. I had a telling conversation with a very senior Trump advisor right before this debate. Like, we're prepared for the 10 minutes that we know is going to be about the tape, but we're also prepared for the other 80 minutes in a way we weren't for the first debate, and they believe his performance tonight is an indication of that. All right, Major Garrett, we thank you. CBS, we'll be back to you a little bit later, of course. CBS News coverage of this second presidential debate will continue in just a moment. I was embarrassed by it, but I have tremendous respect for women. Have you ever and done those things? have respect for me. And I will tell you, no, I have not. I think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it represents exactly who he is. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's go to Nancy Cordes, who covers the Clinton campaign. Nancy, what are you hearing? 
Well, Nora, the Clinton campaign is already declaring victory in debate number two. They argue that Donald Trump was far more focused tonight on throwing red meat to his base to try to write a listing campaign than he was in winning over new voters. And it is true uh, that he went after Clinton on a number of fronts tonight that his supporters, frankly, wished that he had in the first debate on her emails, on calling his supporters a basket of deplorables, on her Wall Street speeches. And so she had to spend a lot of the night on the defensive. He must have called her a liar, for example, a dozen times. And so she had to spend a lot of the time arguing why she wasn't. He said a number of times that she hadn't achieved anything in her 30 years in public life. And so she had to spend a lot of time explaining what she had achieved, going through her resume, talking about uh, helping to create the children's health insurance program, talking about going around the world, uh, talking about women's rights uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, I will tell you that the Clinton campaign, while it acknowledges that Trump was stronger uh, on this second effort than he may have been in the first, they still argue uh, that he made a number of serious errors in this debate uh, that they will use against him over the next few weeks. First of all, at one point, uh, he admitted uh, in his words that he knows nothing about Russia. I think you can expect to see that in Clinton campaign ads between now and Election Day. He also admitted for the first time that he did not pay any federal income taxes for a number of years, though he wouldn't say exactly how many years when he was pressed by the moderators. And finally, he stuck to his insistence, Nora and Gail, uh, that his comments about uh, sexually assaulting women, as the moderators put it, all those years ago, were simply locker room talk. Yeah, he said that repeatedly. When Anderson pressed him about it, he said he had not done any of the things that he had said on the tape, that he had not groped women and that he had not uh, made any unwarranted advances. He made a point of saying, no, I didn't do those things. Yeah. I just said that, them. John? Well, uh, that was a, a, kind of a passing tone for him. I thought just on the point of um, going after Hillary Clinton, I mean, we should remember that he not only called her the devil, but he promised if elected president, he would put her in jail. In jail. That's that's new. We've never, uh, as far as I can remember, what had that the, in American history. The, the suggestion of doing that to a political opponent, yeah. to, to, be, to asking the attorney general to then appoint a special prosecutor to put her, uh, a political opponent, in jail. That's exactly right. That's what's new, and that's what's usually the kind of thing that those are boundaries. I mean, that's another boundary that he crossed. Again, something his base will love. Uh, and, and debates, we should remember, are often a lot about in, in getting your base fired up. Uh, both bases will be fired up here because Hillary Clinton's base will remember all the things they don't like about Donald Trump, and many of them are voting because they don't like Trump, not necessarily because they love Hillary Clinton. And, but Donald Trump, uh, you know, his base will be very excited, but again, that's not enough. There was an extraordinary was moment a, uh, tonight, too, when the question about income taxes came up, when in income taxes came up, and Donald Trump appeared to admit that he had not paid federal income taxes for almost two decades. That's right. He admitted that and then tried to push it, put it back on her and said, you know, if you wanted to fix the laws, you would have while you were there. It was uh, as effective a pivot as he can have, given that uh, liability, because what people found obnoxious in the first debate was when he boasted about about not paying taxes. When he said he, it made him smart. When it, made, it made him smart. And, and in focus groups done by allies of the Clinton team, they found that that boast, not the underlying not paying, but the boast was what hurt him. So in this case, he didn't boast. He turned back on Hillary Clinton and said, you haven't done anything to, uh, to fix the tax code and you're not going to. Uh, of course, some of the claims he made about Clinton's tax uh, plan, the fact checkers are already well at work uh, with the mischaracterizations. Yeah, and in addition to saying that he would, have, he would have her arrested, he also said she had hate in her heart. There was a noticeable gasp when he said that. The audience was very surprised by that comment. And at one point, he seemed to call her the devil. They're calling this the most tweeted debate of the night, of the of the past two debates. Two of them came from Tim and said this, no question who won tonight. Donald focused on Hillary. Hillary focused on the American people. Mike Pence tweeted this, congrats to my running mate at the real Donald Trump on a big debate win. Proud to stand with you. Yeah, Bob Schieffer, if you had to tweet tonight, what would your tweet be in one word to describe what we witnessed this evening? More than one word, but I would just say, how have we come to this? Yes. This is supposed to be a campaign for the most powerful office in the land. Here we're marching in women, 
into the hall who are supposed to be have some relationship with one of the candidate's spouses and what is that supposed to prove i mean over and over if i'm elected i'm going to put you in jail i mean this is what they do in banana republics this is the united states of america People keep asking me, have we, have I ever seen anything like this? And I keep saying no. And I just hope to God I don't see another campaign like this one. America can do better than what we have seen here tonight. This was just disgraceful. I think as we started off saying this is called a presidential debate, but there wasn't much presidential about some of the discussion. Bob Schieffer. Well, but this was WrestleMania. This was not about presidential politics. On both sides, Bob? On both sides? Uh, I, th it, I think Donald Trump gets most of the blame here, but I, I didn't see much to be proud of on either side tonight, although I thought she handled herself as well as she could under the circumstances. CBS News coverage of the second presidential debate will continue in just a moment.